In this video, I'm going to explore programming the physical modeling synthesizer Sculpture, which is in Logic Studio. Now, Sculpture is a physical model of a string, and if you look at the structure, it has a string with pickups, and then a whole lot of other things, which are normal synthesizer components. And for this video, I'm going to ignore the wave shaper, the filter, the delay, and the body EQ, and the limiter. So if we go to Sculpture, it comes up with its default patch here, which actually I don't like to use as a starting point. I normally like to go to the tutorial 0000, default, and start from here. It sounds like this. Now, We've got all of the other things turned off. The wave shaper, the delay, the body EQ and filter are all off. So we've basically just got our physical model of our string. Now, with the physical modeling synthesizer, we need something which is going to be vibrating. And that is the string here, which is essentially a delay line. So this part of the screen here gives us an indication of what the string is. Now, we need to excite the string, put energy into it, and that is normally done with object number one here. Normally, in a real instrument, a string instrument, energy will be going out and some frequencies will be absorbed and some frequencies would be reinforced. And that's done by putting a filter in the delay here. And this section here does it. So this enables us to actually change the way the string vibrates. So let's just start and when programming sculpture often because everything interacts in a complicated way it's very much a process of exploration. Now to start what I normally do I normally turn the resolution up to maximum and I turn the media loss up to almost zero so that it sounds like this. The resolution it, uh, determines the precision of how much computation is made in the sound, but it also kind of acts as a filter. And we have different sounds down there, and the media loss acts as kind of like a, uh, a generation uh, envelope generator release. It determines how much of the sound or energy of the sound is dissipated into the media. Right, up here, long release. Down here, short release. Down here, very short. So we'll go up here. Now, at the moment, we're using object one to put in energy, which is usual, and it's sending in just an impulse. That means just one sample going up to maximum and the rest zero. And the strength of that is determined, determines how much energy gets put in. I normally have the string animation turned on so that I can help work, it helps me know what's going on. So we can see the picture of the string moving. Now, this thing here, the square pad, determines the character of the sound. When it's down here, where it says steel, very metallic, but it has a harmonic spectrum. As we go across here increasing the stiffness, if something's vibrating and it's stiff it doesn't have a harmonic spectrum anymore and that's what we get with this. We get inharmonic sounds added. Okay, so the x-axis here goes from harmonic to inharmonic. On the y-axis determines how many high frequencies get uh, dying away quickly, which they call inner loss. Till we get what they label as nylon there. So high frequencies not dying, high frequencies dying a bit, high frequencies dying a lot. And of course we can go over all around 
to get different sorts of sounds. So this puts in the energy, this controls how the string vibrates. Our output is determined by the pickups and that can change how the sound as well. So if I just move this pickup, I'm using two pickups but I'm just going to move one. We get different timbral changes if we move them both to the same spot. And if we wanted to, we can invert it and now it'll disappear. Oh, no sound at all. Move it a little bit. Out of phase, so we get an inversion there. Okay, let's go back to the normal pickups. Now we can also move where object one is. It can move around the string. It, be, it can be sending an impulse here or over here, or over here, or over here. You get different sorts of sounds in different positions. Not a large amount of variation at the moment. We can also control some aspects of it. Let's, you've got a timbre control. And sometimes these make a big difference and sometimes they don't. We have another control of variation. and we have velocity sensitivity. Now, with these controls, sometimes they don't appear to do anything. It all depends on the circumstances. If I move things around, it might be different. So, now when I change the timbre control, we get a distinctly different sound here. So, you, with sculpture, you've always got to experiment. It's a process of exploration. So, we can make it, we can make it die away a little bit. Just the tone. Okay, there are also other types of ways of putting in energy into the system. Instead of using an impulse, we can do an imitation of a strike, which is like a piano hammer. Change different controls, change the position. Change these. Moving all of these things, the position of the object, the pickups, and this little pad here with the stiffness and inner loss, all interact. So it's quite complicated how, what you're exactly you're going to get. So, as I say, exploration is the most important thing. Okay, let's change another way of putting energy in. Let's use a gravity strike. That's like dropping something onto it. Hmm, a lot of variation there. Let's try another one. Let's try pick. Now we're getting a plucked effect, sounding a bit like a harp. As you can see some of the sounds get very loud, that's why we have a limiter over here. Let's try another system, let's do some bowing. Ah, that doesn't work. Let's let's try moving this. And let's move our bow position. Let's make it so that we get our pickups down here somewhere and bow down here. Bowing in different parts of the string will give us a different effect. What happens when we do this? Oh. 
It's all quite complicated how it will all work. Currently this is only acting on it when the note is turned on. I could keep it on always if I wanted to. Okay, let's try a different type of bow. Take some energy out with the media loss. I could just keep the take the release down, but I normally try and do everything with these controls and use the envelope generator as a final adjustment. You can see where we've got nodal points there. experimenting starts to sound a bit cello like there okay let's also try we can activate it by just sending noise in And the last one is blowing. Currently we're blowing up here, it's blowing the end. Turn the amplitude down a little bit. getting octave harmonics coming through there. So that's all the different types of ways of putting energy into our spring. Okay, so as you can see, a lot of experimentation is required when you're playing with sculpture, but you can get a lot of different sort of sounds just by changing the different ways that we put energy in using object one, the pickup positions, A and B, and the position of object one, and the materials in the filter here. Okay, in the next video we'll start talking about these other objects.